We are here with Tony Levin in his workshop slash studio. And Tony is the bassist from King Crimson, Peter Gabriel, and about a thousand other <laughs> bands. <laughs> He's played with everyone, just everyone. If you have 10 CDs, you have a CD with Tony Levin on it. <laughs> so uh, we are here to talk about Tony's new collection of photographic prints. It's a King Crimson box set. What is this set of prints? Well, uh, as a ba I've been playing bass a long, long time, pretty much since the earth cooled. <laughs> and uh, most of that time I've been taking photographs. And uh, I wouldn't call myself a professional photographer, but that's because I'm busy playing my music. But I got pretty seriously into it as early as the 80s. And I tried to focus on taking pictures of the bands that I was touring with, King Crimson, Peter Gabriel, and, and others, and in the studio also. And uh, sometime in this last couple of years, I, I put out a few books of those photos, by the way. And sometime in the last few years, I felt the need to to take the best, what I felt uh, feel are the best of those, and uh, uh, present them to the public in a really high quality way, and, and get the best prints possible made from them. And it's been an interesting adventure, choosing them and then collating them, and then um, having John Lybrook do the excellent, uh, super quality prints of them. Can you talk a little about your uh, sort of interest in photography? Like, did, was it a hardware thing first, or was it did you see an artist that inspired you as a photographer that made you want to do it? Interesting question. Um, always interested in photography, as a lot of people are, and uh, I, I kind of muddled around with it a lot, different cameras. I was very lucky that I went to Japan at an early age. In, this would be in the 70s and was able to get a high quality Nikon back then when it was a very expensive item here in the States uh, at a reasonable price in Japan. It was a very different economics mm. situation in those days. And, and uh, shooting film, for those of us old enough to remember, is a very different experience than shooting digitally on the road. And it, and it was pretty problematic and, and tricky to shoot regular pictures on the road with bands and get them developed and see how they look and, and then make your adjustments at other shows in other cities in other countries. Mm. So I got used to that uh, parameter and uh, experimented with it and, and tried different things. And, and occasionally I got lucky and got the pictures I wanted. Mm. Are you a full frame shooter, you know, medium format? Like what, do you, do you get into the, that level of specifics? I had a, a Mamaya RB67 medium oh. format and I loved that camera. And I even lugged it around to take pictures. And I'm not talking about with a tripod. I mean, talking about while I'm playing the bass, picking up this big thing and <laughs> trying to shoot. Mostly I did that with Peter Gabriel. I got some very good pictures, which are in some of the books. But uh, in the weeding down process for the, the pictures I've used for the collection, uh, those pictures didn't make it for, for various reasons. When you have oh, tens of thousands of pictures and you're going to get the best eight of them, uh, a lot has to go by the wayside. Can you talk about um, perhaps film versus digital? You know, as a photographer, do you feel like, um, you know, some people say, oh, I only record music on tape, you know, and then there's the Pro Tools crowd, they're yeah. like, it doesn't make a difference. Are you in that sort of uh, camp? Or I'm, I, one I, or the other? I loved film and I like I love digital now. I made it one of the biggest mistakes in my photographic career. The biggest mistake is switching to digital too early. So there's about five, six years of stuff that I've got good photos, but they're not usable. They're just too low quality because I switched to digital when it was very small. Uh, um, Resolution, bit rate. yeah. 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 Um, so I don't, I don't have a preference. Uh, it, was, it was a wonderful process. I love the smell of the darkroom. And I loved that process, and, and uh, even that smell brings me back to those years that I spent a lot of nights. Uh, in my darkroom in New York City, my studio apartment, it wasn't completely dark except at night. So I, I would uh, regularly, nightly, I would spend the night developing pictures, and then sooner or later one would come out not looking right, and I would look out and realize the sun had come up, and it was going through the studio apartment, and, and just barely seeping into the kitchen, which I had uh, uh, curtained off with dark curtains, but it wasn't <laughs> enough. So that was a great process, but so is Photoshop and so is the uh, digital world. And I imagine you 
you've digitized your old film prints, uh, but how many of them? Like, were you selecting specific uh, shots, or d did you get everything digitized? I did not get everything digitized. I, I have too many photos, and I never catalog them well. Mm -hmm. They are in one place, actually, here in the building we're in. But uh, um, for this, I went through a great number of them, and I, could, I had already separated the ones that are better than others. Mm -hmm. And uh, I digitized them as high quality as I could and got them ready for the job. What do you look for aesthetically or perhaps there's a, some other way that you look for a shot that you like? And uh, are there photographers that have inspired you and your aesthetic sense? I, there are photographers who have inspired me. I'm not going to name them. But, uh, I'd, I'd have to go through my books to see, but mm -hmm. I, I have a lot of books of photography and, and I try to as with any art, as with music, you try to up your artistic sensibility by looking at the best stuff and, and somehow having it seep into your sense, especially with format, with, with photos. In my case, because most of the pictures I take, almost all of them are on the road with the same band night after night. You're doing the same show, maybe different songs, but you're in the same situation. Different dressing room, yes, but dressing rooms uh, night after night, month after month, year after year, mm -hmm. even the same dressing rooms. Oh yes, four different times I've taken pictures of that same guy in that same dressing room through the years. So one looks for different things than the first time. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I can't really put into words all the things I look for, but I think after all these years it's safe to say that I, I have an eye on the light on everybody and what they're doing and whether they're laughing or whether they're very serious, and, and if I just see a look that's right, I want to have my camera nearby so that I can capture it. This King Crimson photograph box set, tell us about it and um, you know what is in it. Well, it's eight photos, eight prints, very high quality. I, I can't tell you all the details about the, the technical uh, um, bit about the printing, but we can find that from John. Mm -hmm. and, and uh, Very high quality, which I insisted for this. It's really the work, of, it's part of the work of a lifetime of photos on the road and tens of thousands of pictures of King Crimson on the road. And these are my favorites and, and for reasons. And they each, they each tell, to me, they tell a story. And uh, they each represent that I was lucky to be in that place at that time with a vantage point that other people don't have from on stage or from backstage being in the band. Mm -hmm. You are, you've been playing for 50 years, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, uh, you know, there's probably And I've been not playing well for five years. <laughs> 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 there's probably not another 50 years, you know, left to go. So are you looking at this as like a way of, you know, producing some legacy type artwork, you know, something to pass on to the fans or, you know, how are you thinking about it? Interesting question. Uh, I don't think, like, like most guys and women I know that I play with, most musicians, I don't really think about this in relation to the future, so um, this is not the summing up of my career to me. Uh, however, I haven't thought about what I'm going to do for the next book either. I, I just don't think about it. That uh, When I look through the photos, I recently did a photo book of uh, 250 of my pictures of all bands through the years. I was struck that I really have the chance to present to the public a very high quality uh, collection of the images that I like the best. Mm -hmm. And so I, I felt, as you sometimes do with music, I felt like this needs to be shared, this needs to get out there. And if I don't do it, in, if this was in the lockdown uh, year, I, I felt if I don't do it this year, I, I'll get busy touring and doing things that I really love to do and take less uh, uh, immersion and it won't happen, so uh, I, I spent that year trying to get all of these photos together. For me, when I'm writing music, uh, I'll have a collection of songs that I've produced over the years and some stick around more than others. Is that kind of what happened with this collection? Did you have these photos in mind and at some point I'm going to release it or did you make a decision and just start going through the whole catalog? and? Oh, yeah, there's that one. The latter, going oh. through the whole catalog. I, I, I never was organized enough with my music or my photography to keep a record of, okay, these are the best, these are the these and these and these. I did have, I had them, I think the negatives organized by tour and by year. 
uh, so it wasn't that huge a job. But you know, it involved going through them all and, and finding which ones resonated with me in that way. Some of them, which were very good images to me and meaningful, it didn't warrant being a, a intaglio prints. Mm -hmm. Didn't didn't just didn't warrant it. Some of them were color and didn't didn't want to be in black and white. Uh, there were a whole lot of parameters, and uh, the ones that were there were plenty that were good. I could it, I limited myself to eight. It could have been eighty, and uh, <laughs> we'd have a stack of photos to talk about. Uh, but I limited myself, and and uh, I feel good about the ones we chose. Did you go from twenty to fifteen to ten, or did you go from one to three to you know eight? You know <laughs> when you were selecting these. Uh, I think I think it was about twelve, twelve to fifteen, uh -huh. and and the decisions on what's practical for a collection, what I want the box set to look like, and and the this, this special custom box for the box set and things like that. Of of course, I think many people will want the individual photo that they like the best, and that's fine, and that's the way it should be. Yeah, so the, the weeding down wasn't that bad after the point where I headed down to 12 or so. Mm -hmm. Have you ever done an art show or a gallery? Uh, of your I've project? had a few exhibitions mm -hmm. through the years, and, and I used to keep a, uh, a box of the, the two exhibition sets of photos, and, and, and uh, I lost them. <laughs> I lost oh. both boxes. <laughs> I have the feeling I sent them to be an exhibit somewhere, and I... Did, I forgot about it, and I never asked for them back. Uh, I think that's what happened. I had one from the, the Woodstock Festival, the, the second one, not the original one, uh, just a wonderful set of prints from the, of the audience in the mud and things like that, and uh, that's gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's tough. So in your exhibitions, obviously people know you for the bass and the stick, your music, work, uh, but how how are people responding who don't know anything about you know what you play? I I, I don't know. I have not been gotten... to exhibitions of my photos. Okay. What I hear a lot from is is fans of of the bands, and, and the, of course I've put the photos on my website and on my web diary, my road diary, mm -hmm. and I have for many years. And uh, I hear a lot of feedback that people love the photos, of course, and mm -hmm. uh, I'm probably happiest that I can finally offer it then oh you maybe you wanted that photo on your wall <laughs> it's nice to finally have that option uh, but I don't really have too much experience of people seeing the photos who, who don't know the band or, or know me and what I what it is I do musically mm. and for me I don't know perhaps you're like this you're an early adopter of technology you know you're using digital cameras mm -hmm. I see you using a 360 degree yeah. uh, camera <laughs> abusing it <laughs> abusing it <laughs> um, and I'm curious, is this kind of like, maybe you get sick of looking at a screen and you just want to see these things on paper? Oh yes, I had mentioned before the, the, the tactile joy of having something that you can say, this is it. But also, uh, my life, my home and my life are enriched by the, the very high quality paintings and photos that I have on the wall. And so I have, I think like most people, I have a, a high, I place a high value on the one picture that's very special to you. And if it has double meaning because it, it, it involves a band that you're a fan of or a concert that you are at or, or something like that, then all the better.